In this video I thought I would go over some of the positives and negatives of the Pixie rangefinder camera I recently purchased. My last video about the Pixie was just an introduction video, simply because not many know very much, if anything, about it. Like all cameras, it's not perfect. For me, part of the appeal has been to get in early with a new system. It's like the early days with the original Blackmagic Cinema and Pocket Cinema cameras or the digital Bolex. It's fun to be part of a small group that share tips and tricks, try to iron out the quirks and maybe lay the foundation for the next generation of cameras, if all goes well. It's a bit of a camera gear adventure. So let's start with the positives. First we must acknowledge the fact that it's a modern rangefinder. In fact the only APS-C rangefinder currently in production. Someone jokingly commented on my last video that it's a rangefinder designed by someone that wasn't trying to make a digital M3, and I agree. Modern design and materials, screenless like my favorite Leica the MD262, but with a proper top display that's also viewable in the rangefinder, USB-C charging and offloading, ability to back up to a thumb drive, Bluetooth connectivity for quick previews, a built-in monochrome mode that's more than just a baked-in picture profile, and the list can be made quite long. As I mentioned last time, I'm also very happy about the old-fashioned external light meter. But the modern feature that really shines through is of course the sensor. I'm very happy both with the colors and how pushable the files are. High ISOs is not something I'm used to with rangefinders and it's been fun to be able to use it. The camera has a number of picture profiles that are selectable in post and can give nice results. Speaking of, I know there are people already making custom picture profiles for it and loading them onto the camera. Which leads us into another big positive in my book. The camera is still evolving and its Linux-based firmware is very open for improvements. And that's something to bear in mind when we talk about the negatives. One thing I was going to mention is that I have to go into the menu to change ISO and that half pressing the shutter to engage the exposure compensation can sometimes be a little fiddly. But first I tried reaching out to David and suggested that maybe the back wheel could always be activated for exposure compensation in aperture priority and ISO when in manual. And of course optional in the menu. And he basically said, sure, we can try it in beta firmware and see if it flies. He even mentioned auto ISO. By the way, when was the last time you got hold of the CEO of one of the other camera companies, suggested something and they said, okay, let's try it. Biggest positive is, as I've mentioned, the fun factor. The camera itself is fun to use, playing with the files are enjoyable, talking to other pixie shooters, following the company and how it evolves is simply a fun ride. Now let's talk about some of the negatives and how I work around them. As you know, I buy the cameras I review at full price just like everybody else. And I don't return them. So obviously I had to think my decision through quite thoroughly and as I saw it, there were five things that had me on the fence. But at the end of the day, they couldn't outweigh the positives and I still ended up buying it. Let's start with the price. It's around 3000 euros. I know some were hoping for a super cheap rangefinder, but built by hand in Europe and with a focusing mechanism that alone cost about a thousand euros to manufacture, it's not gonna happen. Next is the speed or sometimes lack of it. It hasn't been an issue for me in practical use. I tend to not spray and pray with a rangefinder. Even on the street or in a semi-fast action setting like this, it's been fine. You can take several pictures in a row when you need it. But when the buffer finally is full, the speed will drop. And note that I shoot raw only. David at Pixie told me that they are working on improving it. Next let's talk about the battery. It can drain rather quickly. I'm used to reviewing old cameras and jumped in on early when Blackmagic Design released their cameras, so turning the camera on and off has become a reflex for me. Also having the Wi-Fi off helps. So again, not enough of a deal breaker for me, I can make it last all day. 
But if you don't want to do that and still buy the camera, the battery is the same as in the Sony A6000, so cheap spares are available online. Next David actually asked if I could mention the app, because they are working on improving it and aren't very happy with it right now. For me, it sometimes have had a problem connecting to Wi-Fi, but other than that it's been okay. The major issue is that it currently can't use Wi-Fi from the camera. It communicates with the camera via Bluetooth for setting and the low res preview if you need that sort of thing. That part works really well. As soon as you open the app it grabs the photos you've shot. So no, you don't always have to have the camera connected to your phone, not even if you want to use it as a preview screen. But you currently have to hook it up to an external Wi-Fi to transfer the raw DNGs. The camera is equipped with hardware to create its own Wi-Fi, but it's not stable enough with current firmware. If you are traveling and just dying to post a picture with no Wi-Fi around, a workaround is to plug the USB drive into your phone. Last issue that could be a deal breaker to some, but that I've decided to just live with, is that some lenses available are so big that they cover the second rangefinder window, making it zone focus only. So if you were planning on using the Noct Deluxe, I would rethink. If you have a favorite lens that you just have to have and it's kinda big, make sure it works first. Oh, one last positive on the subject of focus. Should you need to, it is possible to calibrate the horizontal focusing at home if you are comfortable using a screwdriver and some patience. That's about it. Have a look at my first Pixie video, subscribe for the review, join the Facebook group or follow me on Instagram for more samples. Until next time, goodbye!